We're learning more tonight about the wife of an Obama-appointed federal judge who's overseeing a number of high-profile recount cases in Florida. It turns out she's a supporter of radical Dem Senator Bill Nelson. Karen Walker, the wife of Judge Mark Walker, has previously donated $500 to Nelson's campaigns. The question now has to be asked if Judge Walker will recuse himself from any cases involving Nelson or any other Democrat. You notice how I picked up this democratic thing about recusals? We'll see if it works. Our next guest witnessed the same corruption taking place in Broward and Palm Beach counties some 18 years ago. He was an election recount attorney for George W. Bush. And joining us tonight to take up the issue of Florida and democracy and voting, Congressman Todd Rokita of Indiana, a member of the House Budget Committee. It is great to have you with us, and uh, we appreciate it. You. Yeah, Lou. You have to, you have to just wonder as you're looking at Broward and Palm Beach counties again, what's going on? Well, I, I got to tell you, I can't help but think uh, our good old friend Yogi Berra. You know, it's deja vu all over again. You know, on, on, in one sense, it's the same issues, the same thing uh, that I tried to correct down in Florida some 18 years ago, and that the, then later when I became Indiana Secretary of State, a group of us as Secretary of State corrected across the nation. Right. Yet here we are again. Uh, big difference, though, Lou, this time, big difference. Uh, in 2000, for Mr. Bush, we were worried about, uh, you know, a couple hundred votes. Right. Uh, I understand that Mr. Scott now has over 10,000 votes. Right. So in another way, it's very, very different. And uh, apparently, and I love this expression, uh, beyond the margin of fraud. But I'm, I'm not quite that sanguine or comfortable with the, the, that expression yet. Uh, even it, though it is, uh, at the very minimum, in the case of uh, Scott Walker, uh, some 10 to 12,000 votes, uh, and even more uh, for uh, Ron DeSantis, who appears to be the, the newly elected governor of Florida. So, and congratulations to my friend Ron. Uh, but his mm -hmm. first order of business, I think, has got to take a whole new look at how Florida is mm -hmm. doing this. They cannot hold the country hostage like this any longer. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it is frankly obscene, and the, and the obvious disregard for the gravity and the importance of this election on the part of this election supervisors, they couldn't yeah. be more blasé if they tried. Yeah, and it's really a shame for the people of Florida. I mean, that's who's really hurt here. It's sort of all of us around the nation, but, uh, you know, Floridians themselves don't, de don't deserve this reputation. Let's, let's talk about the, the Republican Party. Uh, the, uh, your, the, your outgoing uh, speaker, uh, Paul Ryan, will be going off to work for somebody who will put a lot of money in his pockets. So somebody I'm <laughs> sure he's very comfortable and familiar with. But my gosh, uh, yeah, Congressman, this is this is now a, a situation where we've got his number two in a leadership team that is Rhino. It's establishment, and it has fought President Trump all the way. What in the world is President Trump going to do when his friends are often more effective enemies than his enemies? <laughs> You're probably interviewing the wrong guy for that. But no, uh, I'm, I'm, at, I know I'm. At, I like to as talk a, as, to somebody who's knowledgeable. <laughs> well, thanks. Lou. I'll tell you what. I'm a huge supporter of President Trump. I mean, mm -hmm. he has done so many good things for this. See, country. you're the right guy. And yeah, <laughs> uh, but really, he's going to have to solve this, and maybe it's it, it's a power sharing kind of deal. Maybe it's not, but uh, the president does have the the ability uh, to really affect the internal uh, dialogue here, and I think he already has. And so let's wait and see. I think Jim Jordan was a strong candidate. He ran a strong race. He is good for this country. Um, Kevin is also a friend, but yes, he you know he comes from a different part of the country. He has a uh, you know a different constituency you know in his district. Is he going to do the yes. same thing that Paul Ryan did with this president? Oh, you know, I'll tell you what. I, I don't know, Lou, but I know that they're two good men. I like them both. I consider them. By, you know, I'm much more conservative on the conservative side of things, but I like both these guys. And when I saw the le new leadership team up there yesterday, Lou. I mean, it had Gary Palmer as the policy chairman. He's a rock rib conservative. It had uh, uh, Mark Walker from the RSC. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was good news. And it had Steve Scalise up there. So I think mm -hmm. we have a good balance. We have a good microcosm of America here. Mm -hmm. And uh, give them a chance. Give them a chance, Lou. Uh, well, we're going to give them a chance. Uh, there's no choice. It's, it's the way the system works. But the fact is, we'd also be idiots if we didn't take note of the fact that Kevin McCarthy is a Ryan acolyte. 
uh, and also is among the leadership team that refused to fund the border wall that the president promised the American people. Uh, this is deeply disturbing that this president, well, who is fighting, well, he's fighting the establishment of both parties, the business establishment, the corporatists, the globalists, my God. Uh, yeah. No president Look, has had to contend with the forces within uh, and, and, and we're all allowed to learn. And I think uh, Representative McCarthy has learned. I mean, he's funding, a, uh, he has a very strong border wall uh, bill. Uh, now let's hold him and the rest of us, frankly, accountable for getting that funding to the man who can make this all happen. Well, it, it's, it'll be interesting, as you say, to see. Wait, we won't. But we will watch very carefully. Congressman. Thanks, Lou. Great to be with you.